Welcome to Dr. Mary Travel Best's Five Steps to Solo Travel Guide for women like you who need a little extra support traveling the world one woman at a time. I've been traveling independently and solo across six continents since 1972. I've been a travel writer since 1993. And if you like the content, tell a friend. In this episode, the FAQ is, what's your purpose for traveling? Today's special episode is San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, part one. Today's mistake, carrying too many bags. And today's travel advice is prioritize flexibility. In this episode, the FAQ, hey, Dr. Travel Best, what is your purpose for travel? Here's my answer. My purpose for travel, and especially solo travel, is to reach into places that may not be the most populated and to connect with women where they are. I wanna help bridge the culture gap. So my ultimate goal for my travel is to bring world peace a little closer together. Now, if I can reach a million women and help at least a thousand of them travel solo, that's my specific purpose and goal for next year. And I will be asking if and how I was able to help you. And now for the destination. It's part one of two on the San Diego Zoo and Safari Parks. It's now called the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. And they're trying to create a world where all life thrives. They've got two front doors, and in this episode, we're gonna focus on the zoo. In the next episode, it will be the Safari Park, formerly known as the Wild Animal Park. So I wanna talk about the zoo and talk about how they have ambassadors all around to help you and to help save, protect, and preserve life. So if you call the website, there's a phone number on there on the website, and you'll hear about their good works. You'll hear about how they are saving the northern white rhinos. They'll talk about rescue centers, and they'll talk about vet science. So they're leveraging about 100 years of wildlife science right now. And they have several species that are new and born at the park. Now, the main attractions are Africa rocks, and that's got baboons, lemurs, and leopards. Then you've got the polar bear plunge, and that's an immersive Arctic habitat. There's lots of polar bears that are above and below the water surface. And then I like the Skyfari aerial tram. That's gonna take you on top of the wildlife habitats with a bird's eye view of Balboa Park. Now, some other exhibits that I like a lot are the gorillas and the chimpanzees. And it's just so fun to watch their kids bouncing around the exhibit. There is a free tram that you can ride around the park. It's one of those stop and get off anywhere you want. And then you can get on anywhere too, right? There's many hills in the park and the zoo, so it does help with so much walking. There's also a guided paid tour, okay? So this is one that's a little more expensive, but could be really worth it if you wanna get up close and stop right in front of each exhibit that you wanna see. Now the elephants, they're a good exhibit. They're easy to spot and you can see them pretty up close. You, you can almost look through their nose. Now the wallabies, the kangaroos and koalas, those are some of the very best exhibits. So I would recommend going over to the Aussie, the Australian side of the park. You might find smaller crowds, even on a busy day. Another favorite place, the koalas, like I just mentioned them. These animals sleep most of the day, but they're so cute. And the girls koala exhibit is just so, breaks my heart. It's just really cute to see all those animals. And um, I also like the birds exhibits. There's lots and lots of birds, including hummingbirds. And they were, last time I went, you were able to feed them nectar. So the next episode you're gonna hear is going to be about the Safari Park, which is found north of the city in Escondido, California. So stay tuned for that one. So now for the lesson learned carrying too many bags. I'm gonna tell you about my friend who brought too many bags and 
She could not carry them all in one trip. So she should have brought less stuff. Instead of bringing several items, just consolidate and just bring the minimum. So even if you're traveling for a month, you can still manage with minimum baggage. I did that. I traveled for a month with just a personal item only. You can do this. And now for today's travel advice. Prioritize flexibility. Like never before for a traveler, there are choices. And due to that, you should consider paying more for flexibility. So what are some of the new variables? Well, airports, you know, there's one thing. They may have a luggage malfunction. Check-in times could be longer than airport staffing shortages could be happening. And the weather can change quickly. So things you can do, you can pay for a partial refund or refund with a fee option. And also with travel, you know, Airbnbs have some cancellation policies and hotels are becoming more flexible. It used to be the other way around. So prioritize that flexibility whenever you travel. I want to see you connect to like-minded women and get inspiration from them on your journeys, both big and small. So discover the many talents by asking meaningful questions about philosophy and not just about the weather. I want to bring meaning to your travels. So send your questions and tips. I can connect on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, or any other social channel. And you can find the five steps to solo travel. It's a book series on Amazon. What's on your travel bucket list? Tell the doctor and her team of women who travel the world seeking the very best. Dr. Travel Best, that is.